Yes, yes, I get it. Humans have caused the destruction of the world. You don't have to tell me that time and time again. I know what humans are capable of. Wait, why is there a penis-shaped mushroom coming out of the ground? Why are these mushrooms so big? Is that rust on someone's boobs? Is that a hippo with a gun? Why is a whale flying in the air? And why is there a slug in someone's mouth? What the fuck? Subicubisco is one of the many anime of the sprawling winter 2022 lineup. The highly anticipated post-apocalyptic action adventure is based on an ongoing series of well-received light novels because apparently light novels can be good despite their long-ass titles. Well, the story follows these supposed terrorist Bisco on his journey to find a mushroom or a food capable of reversing the rusty wind that has transformed Japan into a desolate desert wasteland. Post-apocalyptic stories, especially those featuring climate events, are a pertinent reminder of the effects humanity has had on the environment and the world around them. Humans kind of suck in this world. Also, these types of stories serves as a constant reminder that the League players are a nuisance to society. Restarting civilization off-planet or finding ways to adapt to a rapidly changing ecosystem are common goals in this genre. I rarely see stories about fixing the problem at the root, restoring what was once a beautiful place. Subicubisco, the anime from a stale genre, was able to do that. Strange title, but I'll get used to it. After a catastrophic event that replaced Tokyo with a crater, the rusty wind appeared and has since destroyed much of modern civilization. It's thought by many that mushrooms caused the rusty wind to appear, resulting in the persecution of anyone who might possess them. Since man-eating mushroom Bisco's attack produced an immediate growth of them wherever his arrows land, thus leading him to have a giant bounty on his head. And that's the gist of the story. Unsurprisingly though, episode 1 is heavy on the story's world building exposition. It doesn't open with the character's entire backstory though, as Bisco primarily shows up in a wanted poster and as a monk in disguise, very similar to that of Fister the North Star. The conversation the poster sparks between the gate officials at the city's edge serves to explain how this current world ended up in its desolate state. One single man is making his way through this backdrop. With a bow and arrow, we are given a few shots of his travels here, showing the pure vastness of these spaces and the damage that has been brought upon the world. Eventually, we cut to the cloaked young monk who's attempting to gain access to a city through a secure checkpoint. In contrast to the stark barren wastelands, we cut to a vast cityscape which could be compared to something that resembles classic cyberpunk aesthetic, neon, rain, and the people. In the background, we can hear advertisements promising sweet nothings to the people walking past. As soon as the episodes cut to this, we can easily draw comparisons immediately to the dichotomy you often find in other classic post-apocalyptic stories. Huge cities surrounded on all sides by an empty sea of despair and lawlessness. This is where these stories often thrive. One thing that makes this anime really pop out is not the fact that the MC is a femboy character, but in reality, there's a disguised man named Bisco with mushrooms, arrows, and a cool bow, as well as a femboy doctor with blue hair. What a hot combo. Episode 1 splits time between a disguised Bisco and switching to the Dr. Milo, who's a blue-haired fanboy. The instant switch shows how the rusty wind affects people's health. A story that is able to tackle two very different perspectives is a very scary thing to do and could really go wrong. Milo kindly offers his services at little to no cost for the community with many of his patients, getting exposure through their jobs outside the city and therefore directly in the wind's path. Later, when Milo secretly buys mushrooms from a street food vendor, it's revealed that they actually have healing potential. And that's where the show also shines. The visual presentation of the first episode does a solid job of creating a striking setting. The contrast between the red tinged deserts of rust and the neon lit streets of the prefecture create a visual contrast that keeps the show looking vibrant and fresh as the story just moves from place to place. 
Every time I look at this anime, it really reminds me of Nier Automata, the carnival area in contrast to the desert locations to the forest of robots. It is truly a beautiful thing to look at. While managing to make sure the viewer gawks at the amount of femboys and prostitutes on the screen, the anime does not lack in its action scenes. The brief action we see in the first few episodes is also brought to life as well. The many explosions and the eruption of giant mushrooms that follow them are animated smoothly and land with plenty of impact. This helps the viewer, the panic, the terror of the populace living through the attack. It's almost like you are a part of that world. Taking it all together, these few episodes manage to introduce viewers to its world, while also entertaining them with likable characters, creative places, and a hint of action the show will bring later in a story that can go really in any direction. I'm officially intrigued by the show's world and premise, and look forward to learning more about what's in store for our characters, because honestly, I'd rather just stick to the anime. I don't want to touch the light novels, not because I've never read one, it's because I never want to. Okay, despite my stupid joke and the seemingly bizarre show, the dialogue and the small character interactions are what really endeared me to this really, really weird show. Bisco, for instance, shows unbridled joy and pride when Milo finally starts bonding with Atagawa. The humor in the show is somewhat funny, and it's not because the arrows can have different sized mushrooms while for different uses, but the black humor is very fitting and it balances out the bleakness of the wasteland. Its snappy deliver keeps it from weighing down the tone of the scene. I can't show you every single scene that made me laugh. It really would not help you, so go watch it. While this show can be very serious at times, it knows when to relax and not be so intense. From the glimpses we've seen, the endemic plaguing the world of Subaki Bisco is spiritual and societal as much as it's physical. Isolated cities, corrupted governments, and a poor and dying lower class. Nevertheless, life has still found a way to heal that rust crumb by crumb. The tiny bioluminescent glow is the spark of optimism at the heart of the show, provided that you're willing to go with the flow and ingest a shroom or two. Post-apocalyptic stories often use sci-fi elements like space exploration, colonization, and terraforming to start a new society with the tension hinging on the success and survival of mankind in this new environment. Starting fresh on a different planet sure seems like a better alternative to surviving a planet hellbent on destroying humans, but it operates on the idea that Earth is entirely beyond salvation. Has humanity really lost its way? By having a living organism from the planet that holds the potential to restore the landscape to its original state, Sabiki Bisco presents the idea that fixing the planet might not be entirely useless, and the ticket to do so may be under your noses. So despite the action-packed adventure, the hidden message is that there is hope in the presence of chaos and destruction. That's what drives its characters. I want you to keep in mind that this show has only one season and the light novel is still ongoing. We really don't know how the story will end. Post-apocalyptic tales are shaped by how the natural world changes, so it's inevitable that the stories of surviving a hostile world might also take on a new form. A story really simple could be headed down that path, making it not only an excitable entry to a well boring genre of anime, but also an example of how this world can be saved rather than abandoned. Thank you